Yes, Lord, truly we are nothing without you. Lord, we are nothing. We come and we confess that we need you. Lord, we need you to breathe on us afresh. Lord, we need you to breathe into our neighborhoods, into our communities. God, we need you. We're absolutely nothing without you. So, Lord, we're relying and depending on you. God, we need for you to just to uh, touch and be with our, our AAPI brothers and sisters, our Asian American and Pacific Islander brothers and sisters, our siblings in Christ, God, will you strengthen them and continue, Lord, to protect and cover and bring awareness and bring change. Lord, we just want to lift up the violence in our neighborhoods, Lord, that you would do a miracle. God, we need you to breathe life, breathe new life. Lord, we just want to thank you for healing. Lord, everyone who needs a healing right now, that you would supernaturally touch their bodies. And Lord, we just want to pray that you would just breathe over our mental health. God, we need you. Even in these times, this pandemic, our mourning, our grief, the transitions. Lord, will you just breathe into us? We love you and we need you. Bless this time of your word, God. Do a new thing in our hearts. So in Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen. Thank you for joining us once again. Saints and friends, family of God, the people of the way, we're so glad to have you for another Sunday. Before we get started, I do want to just throw out a few reminders. Uh, we do have a couple of churches who are collaborating with us and with the community to get the vaccine to our people. Um, I want you to pray about the vaccine. We are advocating for the vaccine. I've already got my first dose. Um, we're, we're, you know, we want to want our people to be able to be in a place of health. I know different people have different opinions, but if you are looking to get a vaccine, please go to our website. We do have partnering churches, um, namely Mount Zion Missionary Church in Oakland is offering free vaccines to our people, uh, the people of color in our community. Please go to our website and see if you are eligible. Um, if you can get the vaccine through various agencies or healthcare, we are advocating for you to do that. I'll get my second dose this Friday. So, you know, let's let's just get on board that, so we can be together again. Now, I do want to just talk really briefly about us being together again. And I, 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 we, I just want to reassure you that us as an executive team and as the leadership team, we are truly praying and discerning into what when we should open again. We don't want to just do things because other people are doing things or because other churches are opening up or we truly want to hear from God and we want to discern from God when we should open. So just pray pray with us, pray with us about that and just, you know, we'll we'll keep you posted. Just know that we are praying and we are discerning that. So today we're going to dive into the word and the title of our message today is Oops, I did it again. Yes, thank you, Prophetess Britney Spears. Yes, the title today is Oops, I Did It Again. And it's, we're going to talk about reclaiming prayer after a mess up. Reclaiming prayer after a mess up. And so before we even get started in on that, I just want to talk about a movie. You guys remember the movies? Remember? The, you... It was like back in olden times when we went to the movies. It was like a theater that you walked into. There was popcorn and all kind of. Y'all remember? You know, like this is like something we'll tell our grandkids. Like there used to be movies. I know we haven't been to the movies in like a year, but movies. Okay, the movie I want to talk about today is Avengers. How many people saw the Avengers? All right, put it in the chat. The Avengers was a great series by Marvel. I was like into it, had all the cliffhangers. We had Thanos. It was a lot of stuff. We had all the heroes coming together for a collective cause. But can I tell you who my least favorite Avenger is? My least favorite Avenger is Hawkeye. Y'all probably don't even know who Hawkeye is. My least favorite Avenger is Hawkeye. Hawkeye is the guy with the bow and arrow. Like, he has no other superpower. Like, he can't run. He can't fly. He has no incredible strength. He does, he, he does nothing. He just does bow and arrow. He's an archer. He does archery. 
He's my least favorite Avenger. Like, when you're in a pickle, like somebody's coming to get you, can't, you don't have time to grab your ball in air. What you do when you run out? I just don't, I don't agree with Hawkeye. I don't know why he's in the lineup. It's whatever. But all I do know is that he's an archer. He does archery. And so in archery, you know, I'm just summing up the goal of archery is to hit a target. And there's like a bullseye. And if you're really good, you hit the bullseye. That's the goal of archery. I didn't play or didn't participate. Is it a, it's a sport. It's a sport. It's an Olympics. But that's the goal. So when you don't hit the target, it's called missing the mark. When you, when you, 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 you miss the mark. When you don't hit the bullseye, you miss the mark. So this essentially, this is what sin is. Sin is when you miss the mark. And that's what we want to talk about today. What, do you, what does it feel like when you miss the mark? We've all been there. We've all missed the mark. Okay, can we just keep it 100 today? Is, it, is that cool? Can y'all give me some keep it 100 emojis? We all know what it feels like to miss the mark. We're all human. Um, I just want to keep it real. I'm going to be, okay, we can keep it real today. We all blow it. We all miss the mark. Whether it's intentional, sometimes it's, it's unintentional. Like, hey, I did not set out today to get into an argument with you. Like, I, it wasn't on my radar. I didn't mean to cuss nobody out. Like, it was just, it wasn't on my calendar. It was in, unintentional. But every now and then, there are some times when sin is very intentional. Like, we planned it out. We thought about it. We plotted it. We set the time, date, space. We knew exactly what we were doing. We missed the mark. Am I alone? Anybody with me? Is, this is, what did we do when we missed the mark? What about repetitive sins? Sometimes we get caught in a pattern of something and we're like bargaining with God like, okay, for real, this is my last time. Like I'm not doing, okay, after Tuesday is my last time. Like, be, me and God, okay, if you just help me out this one more time, I promise I'm done with it. Y'all been there? I'm, I'm, is this too real? All right, well, this is what we, that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about reclaiming prayer after a mess up. And I feel like this is an important topic because, you know, we like to shout and we give all the promises. But when it comes down to everyday life, when we just out here trying to live this Christian life, we mess up sometimes. So I just want to know, I'm interested in knowing, how do you respond towards God after a mess up? After you have blown it, after you have just done, I'm not going to start naming different things because we all got our own things. Whatever that e thing is to you, whenever you've messed it up, how do you respond towards God afterwards? We have two different examples that we can see from the Bible how to respond to a mess up. The first one we saw is with Adam and Eve. After they sinned in the garden, their first response was to hide from God, to separate themselves from God, and to put themselves in isolation. Have you been there before? You do something and you just like, I just, I'm not going to church when we did have church. I'm not, I don't want to see nobody. I just want to hide. I don't, I don't think God fooling with me. Isn't that funny when we think we could hide from God? Like, could we, can you really? That's like, okay, are you in that first category? When you, when you mess up, do you just be like, you know, God is just done with me. I don't, you know, I want to hide. I don't want God to see me like this. Or we have another alternative, and that's to return to God. Return to God. What is your relationship with God like after a mess up? So in our scripture today, I want to talk to you about David because David knew about this messing up thing that we all do. And he wrote a prayer to God in Psalms 51. He wrote a prayer to God. And I want to read uh, just a few scriptures and then we're going to we're going to dive into an example of what to do when you mess up. Psalms 51 was written. You could go back and read it for yourself. David had just, you know, David could have been on Mari. Like, it was like real, like, 
real housewives of the kings. Like, I don't know. It was like real drama. Like he was supposed to go to war. He didn't go to war. He saw a, a lady. She was outside, you know, bathing, doing her own thing. He saw her, wanted her for himself, came and invited her, had a night at the palace, you know, wined her and dined her, slept with her. You know, then she he tried to get her husband killed. He he actually had her husband killed, put the husband on the front line. He was all loyal. He was he first he came home was like, man, and he was like, maybe if I get her to sleep with her husband, he won't know it's me. It's a whole bunch of drama in the Bible. Eventually, the man gets killed. David marries this woman and he was like, I'm good. I got away with it. Life is good. And then a prophet Nathan came and was like, David, you're the man like, you know, it's bad. So this is the response of David after a mess up. All right, let's dive into it. Psalms 51. It says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me against you. You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. I'm going to skip down to verse seven. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing Spirit. Our boy David could give us some really good tips on what to do after a mess up. What is your relationship with God after a mess up? Well, this is what I've learned from David in this, this Psalms 51. The first thing I've learned is that we just have to confess and own up. Confess and own up to what you did. Verse three and four he says, I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me against you and you only have I sinned. I love this about David because he owned up to it. You know, y'all it's no y'all know me. I love basketball. I love watching basketball. But you know my you know who my favorite players are on the court? My favorite players are the ones who fight who foul and just be like, hey, yep, it was me. Foul on me. That was that was me. Those are my favorite players, not the ones a.k.a. LeBron, who's like doing this all the time, right? You did it. Own up to it. This is kind of what how I feel about in the spirit. When we mess up, confess it. Own up to it. Because as we mature and grow in God, that our mindset becomes not with what can I continue to get away with or how many times can I keep doing something. Our, our mindset begins to be like, Lord, I don't want to sin against you. That's what David said. He said, against you and you only have I sinned. You know, we're like, hey, I, you know, this person, I, I'm, I'm sorry I cheated. I'm sorry I lied to you. And really, David had a whole nother perspective. Like, hey, it really wasn't against these people. I, you know, I have to make amends to these people, but it's really to you, God. I don't want to hurt you. We're in a relationship, me and you, God, and I don't want to hurt you. Just like in any human relationship, you want to make it right. You don't want to just go around. If you really love someone and when you really mature to a place where you're not selfish in your relationships or dysfunctional, you want what's best for them. You don't want to hurt that person. David said against you and only you have I sinned. I want to make it right. I want to say it's me. And there are times where other factors happen and it causes us to get tripped up. But sometimes it's us. Sometimes it's me. And it's good to confess and own up to that. That's the first thing I learned from David. Second thing I learned from David is embrace God as the creator. You might say, where'd you see that? That's in verse 10 when he says, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. See, this takes me all the way back to Genesis. 
Genesis 1, when God created the heavens and earth, God is the great creator. Do you think that God only limited God's self to creating in Genesis? God is continually the creator. Can you embrace God as a creator? Can you embrace God as the one who can create in us? Because uh, we want to do right. We intend to do right. Sometimes your intentions don't always pan out to your actions. So this is where we have to realize we can't do this on our own. This Christian walk is impossible for us to live in our own strength. We need a new heart. God is doing a new thing. God wants to do a new thing. God, take this old heart, take this, this defective heart that just leans towards sin and just bent towards things that I'm not supposed to want or have and create, do a new work. Do a Genesis 1 work in my heart. Amen. I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm I want to embrace God as the creator. The third thing I see in this passage is to embrace repentance. We need to re embrace repentance. Repentance is a word that is, is not a scary word. It's not a condemning word. It's, it's going one way and turning completely the opposite way and going a different way. And I love this. If you go back and read Psalms 51 on your own, there are so many in me prayers. David kept saying in me, check it out. Have mercy on me. Wash me. Purge me. Let me hear joy. Create in me. Cast me not. Restore to me. Deliver me. These are just prayers of repentance. God, I need you to do the work in me. And it just helps us to really take sin serious. Because look in verse 11, it says, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. This is David reminiscing what happened when Saul, when Saul um, walked away from God and didn't obey God. And he just he was always longing for God's spirit. Sin separates us from God. Sin isolates us. Sin, And whenever we're in this sinful place, it makes us not be where we want to be in God's presence. David said, do not take me away from your presence. And even as we turn our attention to the cross in this Lenten season, this is the whole reason why Jesus came. It was the sin issue. So it's, it, it would behoove us not to take sin lightly, like, oh, I do what I want, I do. No, sin is really a serious issue because it separates us from God. And Jesus, the whole reason for this season is because of sin. Jesus bled and died, sacrificed his life for our sins. It's a really serious issue. So we have an opportunity to be like David when we mess up. And I love David's approach because David's approach was like that of the prodigal son. Y'all remember the prodigal son? The prodigal son who returned to the father. And he had this big old speech prepared like, man, I'm just going to go back. I'm going to do right. But he was surprised to see when he went back home that the father was actually running to him, not the reverse. The father was running after the son. Not the son running back home. The son came home and had a whole speech, but it was, it was the father who wanted, who pursued the person who had messed up. My friends, I want you to realize that this is how God sees us. It's not that so much that, remember, we had a choice. We could hide or we could return to God. I want you to see God in a different light that God's not, you know, waiting for, I'll be glad when you come back. No, God is actually actually always pursuing us, actively pursuing us, even when we mess up. So as I close, I want you to know that when you mess up, you, your mess up doesn't take God by surprise. Like the, God's, already, God's already mapped out our days. God's got this. This is no not new news. Do you know that when Jesus died on the cross, he already took into account every sin that you will all already do, every sin that you've already done and all the sins you will ever do. Like it's already been calculated. It's already been factored into equation. It's already part of the formula. And yet God still chooses us and God still chooses you. 
That's good news. God, that your mess up doesn't take God by surprise. And if God can forgive you, then guess what? You can forgive you because you're not bigger than God. I'm not bigger than God. So if God can forgive me, if God really, God sent Jesus on the cross to die for us and already calculated and, and already made, I don't want to sin just be for sin's sake because I really love God and I want to have a relationship. I'm not just out here freestanding, free, free, you know, falling. But if God can forgive me, this is where the enemy wants to just isolate us in shame and in guilt and we keep having regrets and we keep playing it over. Even David says, my sin is always before me. But I have good news. If God can forgive you and put your sin in a sea of forgetfulness and blot out your transgressions, then you can forgive you. I mean, how I many? I'm going to embrace that. I'm going to forgive myself for my mess ups because God forgave me. And then, you know, I just want to close with this. We are really in a different position than David. See, David, when he when he wrote this, this was before the cross. He was really longing like, God, I will do anything like I, I, I want to do sacrifice, but you don't really want sacrifice. Like I just really like wash me, cleanse me. He was really hoping and yearning for this. But we're in a different dispensation. We are post the cross, post the resurrection. So these things that 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 he, David was longing for, we have ready access to that. We have access to forgiveness. We have access to Jesus. So whenever we mess up, it's an easy return back to God. Repent, confess. And then I want you to I want you to picture God's position towards you. God's not frowning towards you. God's not ready to strike you with the lightning bolt. God loves you and always has. When God sees you, God smiles. Even in our mess ups, God knows that what we're made of, that we're made of, 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 of human flesh. And God wants us to mature and do better. But after our mess ups, God wants you to return back to him. Re- reclaim your relationship through prayer. This is what God's calling us to. I saw a quote from a parent that said, I never want my kids to mess up and think my dad's going to kill me. Or I never want my kids to mess up and think my mom's going to kill me. Instead, I want their first thought to be, I need to call my dad or I need to call my mom. And this is truly what I believe God is calling us to today. When we mess up, that our first thought and our first instinct is not like, oh, man, God's going to be so disappointed. me. God's going to kill me. God's going to strike me now. No, the first our first first inclination will be like, I got to get back to God. I have to run back to God's arms. I have to get back to the one who loves me and offers forgiveness. This is how we reclaim our prayer life, reclaim our identity, reclaim who we are through prayer. So let's just close in this time of prayer. We want to Always have a position of humility and repentance before God. And this is our opportunity. So as we're praying, can you just begin to, there might be things in your life that you just want to lay down before God. Let's just pray about it today. So God, we thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you that you offer us a free gift that we do not deserve. And God, we don't want to take advantage of that gift, but yet we want to come to you in a relationship and say that we're sorry. We mess up. We blow it sometimes. But even in our messes, we thank you for your steadfast love. Thank you for your compassion toward us. And God, give us the strength that when we mess up, that we will return to you. We will reclaim our relationship with you through prayer and conversation. We won't hide from you. We won't isolate ourselves from you, but we will come directly back to the one who loves us, who made us, who already calculated our mistakes and still loves us in spite of. God, we lay all these things before you and we say that we want to return back to you. Thank you for restoring us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us again on this Sunday. Please stay tuned for the way we see it. God bless you. Thank you.